All right, today in this 2005 Ford Ranger Super Cab, we're gonna install part number AL59516. This is the Airlift Ride Control Air Helper Springs. All right, before we start our install, we'll go ahead and get a couple of quick measurements. First, we'll get a measurement of a truck unloaded. Looks like about 34 and a quarter inches. Okay, we'll go ahead and put a load in there, which will squat it down some. Okay, with the truck loaded up, we'll go ahead and take a second measurement. So we're about 32 inches. Let's go ahead and add air to your airbags and see how we lift up the truck. We got our truck loaded up again before we add air. Now we'll go ahead and bring it back up to our original measurement. To bring a truck back up to its original height, we end up having to add 60 pounds. And this is well within the limit of 100 pounds of pressure that the bags can hold. All right, now to install our airbags, we're gonna need to uh, jack the axle off the ground and also remove the tires and wheels. We're gonna start work on our passenger side of a truck. So we're gonna do some sub-assembly first. This plate here goes on top of the springs. And then this piece here goes on top of our airbag and attaches to the frame. Now there's a plastic guide that comes with the kit or a lineman tool. And that'll help us position our top bracket. We're gonna start off with one of the nuts already ran all the way down to the bottom. Then the second nut will go go on top, clamping this in place. Here we'll tighten up till it just takes up the slack. That way we can still move it a little bit if we have to. And then our bottom bracket, we'll use this bolt. It'll go through a slot in the center and throw it into here. Just need a three quarter inch socket to tighten that down. We'll go ahead and put this into place. Now our truck has a, a length of a U-bolt sticking up past the springs, so we're gonna use the spacers that come with the kit. All right, let's go ahead and put the assembly into place and on top of our spacers. Okay. Now we got it sitting on the springs. We'll go ahead and route our U-bolts from the bottom of the springs through the spacers and on top. All right, once we put our U-bolt through, we'll go ahead and put some flat washers on it and then the lock nuts. Now we got this loosely installed. I'm gonna make sure that the center of the bracket is gonna be over the center of the axle. Okay, at this point, we'll go ahead and tighten down our U-bolts to the spring. All right, now when we tighten them down, we'll make sure uh, even on both sides. Okay, we'll use a 916 socket to tighten them down. Now there's an indentation right here that a bracket has to surround and the holes have to sit on the flat part of the surface. So it's okay to move it left or right or have a little bit of a twist in it. In this case, ours is gonna have a little bit of a twist, this side pointing down. So that way we have plenty of, uh, so when we drill our holes on top here, we don't hit the curved part of the steel. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit of angle on mine like this. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and mark my holes using a 3 8 drill bit. Okay, now our holes marked, we can go ahead and take our bracket back off. Okay, for upper bracket out of the way, we'll go ahead and drill out our holes. I'm gonna drill a small pie hole first, and then go up to our final hole size, which would be about 3 eighths of an inch. When you drill out your holes, you also wanna make sure there's nothing behind the frame as you're drilling into, like fuel lines, or brake lines, or wiring. There's really not much here on the passenger side, but it's a totally different story on the driver's side. Perfect. Our two bottom holes and, uh, drilled out, we'll go ahead and take a bracket and put it into place. And of course, the holes aren't going to be exactly perfect, so that's why I use two holes to help hold the bracket up for me. We'll go ahead and put the hardware on the other side. This is going to get the flat washer and a lock nut. and snug it down. Now we'll go ahead and drill our last two holes and install hardware there. Okay, with our upper bracket tightened down, we'll go ahead and torque the bolts down as specified in the instructions. Alright, let's get our airbag ready to install. We'll go ahead and take the air fitting here and we'll thread it into the top of the airbag. We'll get it started finger tight first until the uh, sealant engages the threads, and then two turns for a wrench. One. Now, remember that bolt that was in the alignment tool? We're going to need that back and a flat washer. I'm going to go ahead and crush the airbag. Then we'll go ahead and put it into place. Put the air fitting through the slot. And work the airbag in. Okay. We'll take the bolt and put it back in the bottom here. Just enough to take up the slack. Okay. Now it's kind of hard to see the rest of this, but when this airbag's in place, we'll go ahead and take the star washer. And one of the plastic nuts from the alignment tool, we'll go ahead and put that into place, and we'll go ahead and run them down. We don't make it, want to make it tight, but just enough to hold this in place. Okay, you can see how we can move it. Okay. 
Next, we'll go ahead and work with our air line. We got our whole lengths of tubing here, and we're going to cut it in half. We're going to use a tubing cutter to make an even and clean cut. Take one half of it, and we'll go ahead and run it directly into our airline fitting on top of the air spring. Okay, we'll push it until it stops, then push it in again until it seats. There it goes. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and add some air, maybe about 10 pounds to give it some shape and make sure it sits correctly in here. And we can adjust it uh, left and right as needed to make sure it's in a straight line. With about 10 pounds of air in there, we'll go ahead and manipulate it to make sure it's in a straight line up and down. So our airline fitting ended up right up against the steel here, and our bolt on the bottom was all the way over towards the wheel. So once we're satisfied with the placement, we'll go ahead and tighten down the nut and the bolt on the bottom. With our airbag in place, we'll go ahead and put about 30 pounds of PSI. Then we'll go ahead and spray our airline fitting for leaks. Dishwashing soap and some water will work just fine. Let's go ahead and take our airline now and run it to back towards the center of a hitch. Where we we'll run our airlines is going to be personal preference. For us, we're going to run back to the, towards the bumper and the hitch. We'll stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. Now there's a pre-existing hole in our bumper right here uh, that's just undersized. We just need to uh, make it larger to 5 16 And so we're gonna put our driver's side airbag uh, air fitting here. So we're gonna replicate that hole on the other side. Again, I'm starting off a pilot hole and then I'll go up to my larger size. All right, let's go ahead and install our hardware. First off, it's going to be a nut. I'm going to run that all the way down. And then a star washer. We'll go ahead and run it through our hole. And then a rubber washer and a flat washer. and then another nut. Okay. Now we'll use a half inch socket. Okay. We got it pretty well tight without even using the ratchet, so we'll leave it just like it is. We'll go ahead and bundle up our airline underneath. We've got a nice generous loop underneath there in case we need to make adjustments. We're done with our passenger side. Now we'll go ahead and repeat all these same steps on our driver's side. Okay, and with that, that'll finish it for our install of the Airlift Ride Control Air Helper Springs, part number AL59516, on our 2005 Ford Ranger.